Folks, I had no idea that Brian Laundrie grew a pair of jugs before he died. Did you know that? You didn't know that? Well, that's what you would believe watching these pressures with the Northport Police Department. Now, the reason I bring this up, this whole idea that Brian Laundrie grew a pair of jugs before he died, is because on September 15th, and this is according to Crime Online, well, actually, Crime Online and News Channel 8 WFLA, I'm going to share these two articles with you. But according to Crime Online, the Northport Police Department had set up cameras around the laundry home before September 15th. But on September 15th, the laundries went out to the reserve to retrieve the Mustang. They didn't want it being towed. And that makes sense. I mean, you wouldn't want your vehicle being towed in an area where it's not supposed to be parked. So the laundries go out to retrieve the Mustang from the reserve. And the Northport Police see the Mustang pull into the laundry driveway. And they think that Brian is one who got out of the Mustang and went into the house. Well, it turns out it was Roberta Laundry. She was wearing a baseball cap. Now, maybe they thought that Brian Laundry was in disguise. But you can think that a wonderful scholar at the Northport Police Department, Josh Taylor. Before I get into that, did you see the presser today with the Santa Fe Police Chief? You want to talk about contrast. Just take a look at any of these pressures with the Northport Police Department and what we saw today in Santa Fe with the Santa Fe Police Chief over this case involving Alec Baldwin. Now, if you haven't heard by now, Alec Baldwin accidentally shot a similar photographer, I believe it was, by the name of Helena Hutchins. And there had been some tension on the set earlier that day. The camera crew walked out because of work conditions. So there might be uh, some ties there between what happened early in the day to the shooting, we don't know. But what we do know is that the assistant director, what they call the AD, allowed Alec Baldwin to pick up this gun that was just sitting on a table. You're not supposed to do that. Everything's supposed to go through the prop master, if I'm not mistaken, on a movie set. And there's certain protocols that are supposed to be followed so that that gun is not filled with live ammunition. So somebody dropped the ball in that case. Well, now you have a young cinema photographer who was killed. And you also had Joel Souza, the director, who was injured. He was sent to the hospital. But the professionalism from the Santa Fe Police Department compared to what we've seen with the Northport Police Department. And I'm not trying to knock anybody at the Northport Police Department. I'm sure there's some fine people that work at the Northport Police Department that we don't see who are working behind the scenes. But people like Josh Taylor, they should be fired immediately. Why wasn't the police chief the first one out at these pressures when this whole thing with Gabby Petito happened? The search for Brian Laundrie. Why wasn't he out there? We're going to talk about this presser he had on September 16th, the day after the Laundries went out to the reserve to retrieve the Mustang. So Josh Taylor believed at the time that who they saw on camera was Brian Laundrie getting out of the Mustang, going to the house, even though it was Roberta Laundrie. She had hair. Brian Laundrie didn't have hair. He was bald. He had a goatee. He's taller. And she also has, well, you know, she's Brian's mom. He's her son. We can add two and two together. Right, Northport Police Department? But the difference between these two pressers, or the series of pressers from the Northport Police Department and the Santa Fe Police Department, you can't miss it, folks. It's like a train coming at you at 100 miles an hour. So according to Crime Online, Northport Police installed hidden cameras around the laundry home before and after Brian Laundry went for a hike. A News Nation reporter Brian Enton said this week that he knew about the hidden cameras for some time after police saw him through one of them in a neighbor's backyard. And the Northport police called the neighbor to have them get Brian Enton off of the laundry's yard. Or out of their yard, rather. That camera was put up after Brian Laundry went missing, Enton said. And despite the cameras being put up, they did little to help police keep track of Brian Laundry. Brian stepped out for a hike on September 13th 
according to his parents, but never returned. Now, this is where things get juicy. This according to News Channel 8 WFLA. Northport police admit to mistaking Roberta Laundry for Brian the week he disappeared. Northport police admitted Monday the mistakes were made in the Brian Laundry case. The department spokesperson, Josh Taylor, said that they were keeping a close eye on Brian before he went missing, but actually confused him for his mother. How can that be? How can that be? Once again, his mother is shorter. Brian Laundry's mother is shorter. She's got hair, somewhat lengthy hair. She's somewhat petite from what I understand. She has. Where Brian does not. He's taller. He's bald. He's got a goatee. How can you be confused here? Northport Police Department. How can you be confused? I don't get it. Can we say Keystone Cop? And Taylor told WINK Wink that Brian and his mother are kind of built similarly. Huh? And they believe Roberta was wearing a baseball cap when the mistake happened. Taylor told News Channel 8 WFLA that the mix-up happened on September 15th, two days before a missing persons report was filed by Brian's parents. Pardon the background noise. Somebody's doing something outside my apartment here. According to the Laundry family attorney, Stephen Bertolino, who I affectionately like to call Stephen Burton Ernie, this occurred several days after he went missing. Christopher and Roberto Laundry claimed that they had last seen Brian leave home to go hiking on September 14th. However, at the beginning of October, Bertolino, Stephen Burton Ernie, said he went missing on the 13th. So I think what happened is that Brian probably stormed out of the house when whatever went down went down between him and his parents. We have to blow off steam, go to this reserve, take a hike. He came back and probably left in the middle of the night, took the Mustang with him. So that's probably why there's confusion of when exactly Brian Laundry left. I believe he left twice. I think he uh, went out the first time because he got into a fight with his parents, went to blow off steam. I think he came back and they left in the middle of the night. That's what I think happened. Now, Bertolino told Fox 8, or Stephen Burton Ernie, told Fox 8 on your sides, Mesa, forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, Mesa Siadi, last name S-A-E-I-D-I, last week, he had notified the FBI the night Brian Laundry failed to return home. He also said the parents went to the Mayakahatchee Park on September 15th and brought the gray Mustang home so it wouldn't get towed. Josh Teller, in his interview with WINK with Wink, said it was Certainly news to us when Laundry was reported missing on September 17th. Why weren't you tracking this guy from the beginning, Josh Taylor? Isn't that your job? You put cameras up. How could you miss this? How could you miss where Brian Laundry was going? I don't get it. I just don't get it, folks. Now, during a Northport police conference on September 16th, Police Chief Todd Garrison, who should have been doing these presses from the beginning said they knew where Brian was, based on a tip that Brian might be in Tampa. But Bertolino, Stephen Burton Ernie, confirmed on September 17th that the whereabouts of Brian Laundry were unknown. There is no excuse, I'm sorry, there is no excuse for what happened in this case with Brian Laundry. I am sure a lot of people at the Northport Police Department are going to get fired. There's going to be a lot of musical chairs Guaranteed a lot of musical chairs. You had cameras up around the laundry home. Why weren't you tracking this guy? And the laundry parents should have told this guy, you're not going out blowing off steam. You're going to stay in this house. We're putting you under house arrest as your parents. You're not leaving. You're not talking to anybody. We want the truth of what happened. We're going to hire a lawyer. You're going to keep quiet. And we're going to handle this. I think these parents, they sound like the Parents who uh, grew up in the Dr. Spock generation. That's what it sounds like to me. So I thought I'd share these two stories with you. One from Crime Online. The other from News Channel 8 WFLA. But as I say, this all ties back to culture. It really does. You don't have 
enough gall and gumption to do the right thing, Northport Police Department, to step up to the plate and do your job to the best of your ability. I think a lot of these people end up in these positions because they know people. This is probably the only place they can work. Now, there are some who are very good at what they do. My dad was a firefighter for 30 years. He did arson uh, arson investigation before he, he retired. Say it with me, everybody. Arson investigation. But he did arson investigation before he retired. But he was good at what he did. He loved what he did, and he had integrity. He did his job right. And he didn't get there because somebody uh, put him in that position or he had connections. He got there because he worked towards it. So I think a lot of these people end up in these positions uh, that wouldn't uh, be able to really work anywhere else don't have the skills to make it in the real world. So they end up in these government jobs. And let's face it, law enforcement is somewhat of a government job. So a lot of these people end up in these jobs where they really shouldn't be because they don't have uh, the uh, the training or the expertise uh, to be in that particular position. But they're there because they have connections. Let's get back to integrity. Let's get back to doing the job right and doing what's best for your community. Doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, Josh Taylor. If you didn't know, or pardon me, if you didn't knew, if you did, yes, if you didn't know, trying to remember my proper verbiage here, if you didn't know where Brian Laundry was, you shouldn't have come out and said anything to begin with. You should have verified this type of whether or not Brian was in Tampa or at Fort DeSoto Park. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click that like button, subscribe, hit me up on Instagram at hashtag Jason Composes, leave comments below. And now you can reach me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. Folks, I've had the worst time trying to do this video for you today. I said, I'm going to try to do it in one take. That didn't work out. So do several takes on this video. So forgive me if the words aren't coming out right tonight, but you know, that's the way it is. By the way, what do you think of my graphic here? Now I was trying not to be too risque because this is a family show. This is YouTube, but a lot of you will get the inside joke here. But if they thought they saw Roberta Laundry on the 15th get out of that Mustang and they thought it was Brian Laundry, then obviously Brian Laundry must have magically grown a pair of jugs. Must have. You mean Brian Laundry was transgender? We just didn't know it? What was Gabby Petito hiding? So I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. I'll catch you next time. And God bless this great country.